Hey guys, welcome back. It's Mike. Um, today, what I want to do is I want to tie another salt water fly that we uh, I kind of mentioned it in the last video in the uh, in the bug and the um, the redfish popper video where we tied this baby. Um, what I want to do today is I want to talk about this fly. So, yes, the other day I tied it in a green and white pattern. And this is kind of like a, it's kind of like a tarpon bunny. I mean, it, it's very, very similar, except I want to show you a way to make the hackle where it's extremely webby like this. So, I mean, you, you probably can't really tell through the camera, but this stuff right here, it's not like a normal hackle when you, when you tie it like this right here. You get a real webby pattern. It's gonna, it's not gonna be as quick when it, when you, when it pulsates in the water. It's not gonna pulsate quite as, ow, oh, that hurt, just poke my finger. It's not going to pulsate quite as fast. It's going to be kind of slow. I think it'll get the fly better action. And plus, the way I want to tie this, I want to tie it so that it'll be really useful for uh, redfish um, as like a slider, or it'll also be good for speckled trout, stuff like that. So let's go ahead and get to it. It's a real simple saltwater pattern to tie. I, it's one of those things, it's one of those flies where you can really knock a bunch out at one time. Um, what I'm going to do is, is uh, for this fly, I'm going to use the green thread. Um, let me go ahead and spool one up real quick. Done. Okay. Uh, for this fly right here, I'm also going to use the automatic bobbin. You can see it's just kind of, you know, it's a pretty cool thing. Kind of leaves it stays where you leave it. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start the fly off right in the middle and work my way to the back. Give yourself a good solid base to. Uh, to tie on your uh, rabbit string. Okay, so for this fly right here, I'm gonna use Tiger Bard Magnum Rabbit Strips. And this is in a, let's see, it says Mahi Green Black Over Chartreuse. So, should be pretty good. Man, these things are long. All you need to piece is about um, four to five inches, is what I would recommend. And when you're cutting this stuff, Go ahead and grab a pinch of it. You know, get, okay, this is the part I'm gonna cut off and use for the fly. So go ahead and grab a pinch and then pull out all those fibers. So when you cut it, you, you're you leaving those fibers so that they can so that they can hang off the end like that. Not too, too much, that's just perfect. That's about all you want. Oh, I hate messing with rabbit hair. That fur gets everywhere. The worst part is, is when I'm messing with rabbit hair, a lot of times it gets caught in my beard. And uh, <laughs> I end up having to pick it out later. Or uh, use the vacuum to help me get it out. And this stuff, whenever you mess with rabbit hair too, you have a ton of under fur. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, is kind of wrap the, the, the rabbit strips. I mean, the rabbit strips are pretty wide. I wrap it around the hook so it doesn't really bunch up. It kind of wraps around it. Then I use the thread, which just broke on. That's eh, no problem, just tie it back on. Whenever, one thing I've learned, I've been tying a bunch of saltwater flies lately and getting into it really heavy. Um, one thing I've learned is that uh, a lot of times it's not about how tight you pull the thread when you tie, it's about how many wraps you put down. Cause you're not really gonna worry about building too much bulk on these flies. It's really impossible to do. Uh, see that cool feature? I can pull this thing out and then just right back in. It's got a little clutch mechanism on the spool. Okay, um, let me get this drawer right here out. Nope, that's more rabbit strips. Okay, perfect. That should work. Now I'm gonna use some of this Crystal Flash, Crystal Flash material, and this is from Orvis, and this is also Chartreuse. It's really important when you're tying these flies to use a color thread that's going to match the wing material, the hackle, stuff like that, and go together with it really well. Because what you're going to end up doing is you end up um, building a very tight, strong head around the fly. 
And I'm only gonna use about 10 pieces of this, about that much, I mean a good section. And cut you off a piece about eight inches long, or chunk about eight inches long. Go ahead and uh, what I do is, is I just kinda even it up on both sides of the thread so that you have the thread and you have the crystal flashes wrapped around the thread, thread and then clamp it down and then work your way back keep forgetting there we go and then work your way back about halfway back to the rabbit strip and then split it as it was on the thread pull it to each side so I got this one piece over here, or this one clump over here, one clump right there, and then pinch it on the sides. And then, oh, again, it doesn't help too that I'm using, these are, if this is a two-aught Gamagatsu Executive Series, which is, um, it doesn't it doesn't look like a saltwater fly because it doesn't have that stainless steel hook, but these things are actually coated. They're, like, they're blued, really. Um, kind of similar to what you would see like on a gun, like a blued handgun. I think it's pretty interesting, but they won't rust. I've had good luck with these. So I want to make sure that the uh, crystal flash is the same as the tail, and it says it's actually a little long. So let me move the camera real quick so you can see. Okay, so uh, when you're trying to cut your crystal flash or flash of boo, whatever, don't just don't just snip it, you know, because you really don't want to give it, loosen it up a little bit and then just kind of cut it in an angle and that'll make them look a little bit more natural they're not going to all cut off at the same point it looks makes it makes it look a little bit better in my opinion I even kind of sometimes I rough it up a little bit just kind of cut some pieces short some pieces long they don't have to be you know you kind of want it to look a little bit rough it's just more natural that way and then so there you go so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin a base now if you don't have a Norvice that's fine. Uh, you can just uh, just make some thread wraps. It just takes you a little bit longer. I like the Norvice because it speeds everything up a little bit. Okay, so now we're gonna do a couple things here. This is this is the cool part making this cool dubbing like I was talking about. Go ahead and strip you. Get out some uh, some uh, saddle hackle um, that you something you would want to use on a streamer. Really thick stuff. Get out if you, when you when you're selecting your fibers. Look for the thickest, most webby uh, saddle uh, saddle hackle f uh, feathers that you can find, and try to get them to all about the same length. Go ahead and strip off the fluffy stuff at the bottom. There we go. Give yourself a spot to tie in. Okay. Now you're going to use three black and. Uh, no, yeah, three black and two green, two chartreuse. So get the three black on there. The only reason I'm using three black is because uh, I want it to be a little bit darker, a fly. So there's my three black. Actually, uh, yeah, that's perfect. Cool. And they're just kind of loosely tied in there right now. And then get your uh, your chartreuse. And I'm going to use these two, which I've already kind of pre-selected to kind of make things go faster and kind of line the tips up. Okay. Really? See, I told you, this, this thread's junk. And it's not, it's probably not Uni's fault either. It's probably something I'm doing. I just don't realize it. If you've watched my fly time videos before, you can tell I don't I don't break a lot of threads. I think the problem is though is that I've been tying so many of these past bugs and these saltwater flies. I'm using this eight dot or the equivalent of eight dot. It's seventy uni. I'm so used to uh, being able to put so much tension on the thread. Hold it there. Let me tighten this thing up too. If you uh, for any new beginners out there, if you're using um, uh, UTC, and you know you'll you'll know if you're using UTC or not, or uh, if it's if it's 70, you're using two UTC. If you if 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 you're 
if the thread size is counted in 70, like like this right here, it says 70 on it, you're using like a UTC thread. And uh, what it is actually, it's, it's, it's a lot of smaller pieces of thread that are bound together, but they're kind of just ran the same direction. So you could, whether you, when you spin your thread like that, so you can take your thread and spin it, and it'll either tighten up one way, or you spin it the other way and it'll loosen. And so you can get it to lay flatter. Um, you know, if you're, if you're making a body for like a fly, or like when, when we're making the head later on in this fly, I'll have to spin it the, the opposite direction to get it to um, lay flat. There we go. So. And then wrap. Okay. Trim off all your butt ends. Okay. Next, uh, if you have an extra bob, uh, extra spool of a, um, or extra bobbin, you know, you always keep my thickest wire on one. It helps me out. That way, I can always calculate the much, as much as I need, and also it helps when you make dubbing brushes as well. Like this is a. Uh, I guess I guess you could consider this a dubbing brush. I'm, I'm not too sure if uh, I would. It's kind of it's it's a different way of tying in hackle. That's for sure. And it's gonna reinforce it really good. You know, I promise you. If you tie your hackle in this way on your saltwater flies, a fish will never. The 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 fly will actually get worn out and break off probably before the hackle um, the uh, hackle stem breaks. Go ahead and take your thread and lay it out on. Uh, if you have a thread post like I do, and I'm going to zoom out here and show you this. If you have a thread post like I do, uh, use it. Or um, if you're tying on a normal uh, rotary vise, but you have to have a rotary vise. That, that's very important. Okay. So then what you want to do is, is bring your wire out. Grab all these hackle feathers and go ahead and spread them out really good. Spread them out of the way. Make sure they're all flat. They're all running the same direction. Cool. And then pinch your thread and then pinch the wire with it. Hold all the hackle feathers at the tip. Go ahead and make sure they're all spread out really nice. And then give the device a spin. Okay, and then once again, bring the thread in, and then make sure you brush them. See how webby they are, and they're nice. Okay, and then as you wrap them, go ahead and brush them back. Brush them back. It may help. You have to wet your fingers sometimes. It helps them go the wrong, right, right way, right direction. Okay. 